that down. Let's go on to this, shall we? You know, Joker 2, uh, it just played in some for some advanced fan screens. It opens this week officially. I hated it. I thought it was absolutely terrible. As somebody who passionately loves the first Joker movie, everything great about it is completely missing from this one. And the musical elements did not tell the story as musical elements should in a musical. They interrupted the story and were pointless. The whole movie's pointless. But if you're looking forward to seeing it, go see it. Maybe you'll enjoy it. I hope that you do. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Here we're, we're talking about some financial realities surrounding Joker Folia do. Because according to Screen Rant here and others, Joker 2 opening box office projected to be lower than 2019's Joker. That's a bit of an understatement. I want to set the context for you. The first Joker movie which, again, I think is brilliant. I know not everybody liked it. That's fine. I loved it. But the first Joker movie cost, reports vary, but anywhere between 55 and $70 million to make. 55 to $70 million. For argument's sake, let's say 60 Just for argument's sake. $60 million to make, roughly. The movie had a $96 million opening. And, of course, going on, to be the first R-rated film in history to join the Billion Dollar Club. Got nominated for Best Picture. Joaquin Phoenix won the Academy Award for Best Lead Actor. Great success all around. $60 million to make. $96 million opening weekend. Joker 2 cost around $200 million to make. Some reports say... 190, some reports say 195, some reports say 200. Let's go with 200. Joker <laughs> 1, roughly 60. Joker 2, roughly 200. And by the way, I did not see $200 million on screen. I, I, I don't know what they put that money into. Wow. I mean, that pockets. movie looked like a movie that should have been made for about $40 million. But whatever. Joaquin Phoenix doing a sequel and Lady Gaga ain't cheap. So $200 million, Joker 1, $60 million, opened with 96 Joker 2, $200 million, and they're, gonna, they're saying it's going to open to around 55 Roughly triple the cost to make roughly half the box office they're going to get out of it. Let me say that again. Joker 2 is roughly triple the cost to make. And it's going to end up making, at least opening weekend-wise, in the neighborhood of half. So it's fo a little bit more than half. Folie probably. à toi. Folie à toi. So a little, right around, maybe a little bit more than half. I am not a mathematician out of MIT. But I believe that is less good. I think that's less good. Yeah, it's more less good. That is more less, less good. good. That is a big step backwards. There is no anal money here for Joker. <laughs> well, this um, it, it's a disappointment. Now, look, I have never thought even if Joker 2 was great, I have never thought Joker 2 would make nearly as much money as the first one. I've been saying this for about a year because Again, the first one did make over a billion, but not everybody loved it. And I thought, I always thought that fewer people would come out for the second one, but it could still do very good. After seeing how truly awful the film is, and that's a subjective opinion, there are others who like it, and that's great. I don't know that this movie gets to 500 million. Mm. Like, I, I honestly don't know. I'm not saying it won't. I'm just saying I, I don't know at this point. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Dollar Shave Club. Hello there, my fellow handsome gentlemen. Nice face you shaved there. Whether you're going smooth shaven or maintaining a beard, Dollar Shave Club offers shave and grooming products that are always high quality, but never overpriced. If you like to wet shave for that clean, close shave, they've got the Club Series 6 Blade Razor, a shave so comfy your skin will take a nap. Six stainless steel blades for our closest and most comfortable shave with a vitamin E infused lubricant strip for 
comfort and glide and precision trimmer for precise detailing. Their amazing shave butter, clear view, smooth glide, designed for precision. Shave butter is a translucent shaving cream alternative that allows you to see exactly where you're shaving. Bonus, it has long lasting lubrication that helps soften whiskers for maximum glide and leaves your skin feeling hydrated. But don't take our word for it, Try it for yourself. You can visit their site right now for 20% off, $20 or more, and get your products delivered right to your door. Visit dollarshaveclub.com slash campia and use promo code campia for 20% off, $20 or more. And remember, however you shave, Dollar Shave Club is here to help you stay handsome. Anyway, Chris, you're seeing these numbers. Yeah. Around $200 million to make it. Now projected for anywhere between $50 and $60 million opening. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear these numbers? Womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. That's basically it. <laughs> Did I almost get you? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. One of these days, spit take right into that Almost microphone. had, just took a drink of water. All right. But yeah, I, I, this is the thing with trying to capture lightning in a bottle a second time. Mm. You often don't. <laughs> you rarely yeah. do. And, um... I mean, follow me on this journey. Ryan Reynolds actually talked about this in regards to the Deadpool films of on that sequel, they got so much more money and it made them not as effective storytellers mm -hmm. because they just went, oh, we can have this happen and we can have this and we can do this. And they threw money at everything. And when you do have a lower budget film, this is nothing to sneeze at, obviously, but a lower budget film, it does make you focus on certain things, character driven moments, really creative shots, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> it, uh, budgets fuel your creativity because you got to be creative. Otherwise, things can look cheap or fall flat. When you throw a whole bunch of money at things, when you throw a whole bunch of spectacle at things, sometimes it just seems like flash and trash. That's kind of how this is sounding, and I don't feel like this is going to bring in the audience like they hoped it would. The whole point of a musical, right, the reason why you sing is because your emotions are so much bigger than you that <clears throat> words cannot contain them in that moment. That is the purpose of songs in musical theater. It should not detract or deviate from the story. You brought this up earlier in the week where other jukebox musicals have been effective with this, like Moulin Rouge. Those songs made sense for the characters to sing, where it felt like that was just what they needed to say in that moment. They told the story. Exactly. Whereas this deviates and detours. I feel like these initial reviews are really hurting this. I had heard from folks before this movie came out, too, that it was not going to be very great um, from folks on the production side of things. Um, and it's it's a shame because, you know, the this whole team really believed in their first film. I And I know I wasn't a fan of the first Joker, but I understand why people like it. It is a very well-made movie. It is a very well-acted movie. It is a very well-executed movie. It's just not my cup of tea. And I do think that the divisiveness of that first movie is great. Uh, some people love it and think it has such an amazing story to tell. And other people are like me and they go, oh, I felt so uncomfortable the whole time and mm -hmm. I don't like this movie. This one, it's, it's a shame to see something like this, even as somebody who's not a fan of the original one. <laughs> it's a shame to see people go, oh, wow, this is just not good. Mm -hmm. I would rather have people really, really divisive on it again and either love it or hate it. Because I think that's the worst thing art can be is meh. I don't know. I'd rather make meh than something that's universally hated. But still, mm. I mean, I, it's going to sound like a like weird a comparison swing. for Joker to <laughs> Toy Story. Yeah. After Toy Story 2, the, the folk, the brain trust of Pixar said, we're done. We're done. We're not going to make Toy Story movies anymore. But then what happened? I think the first guy to come to the table was Andrew Stanton. Said, we've got this awesome idea. And because they had an awesome idea, they went, let's revisit whether we should do another Toy Story then. Because we've got this awesome idea. That wasn't the creative process for Joker 2. The creative process for Joker 2 wasn't, we've got an awesome idea. It was... First movie made a billion dollars. We got to make another one. What do you got? What do you got? Yeah. Let's give us something to go with. I mean, you could even say the same thing for Deadpool 3, but the thing is, literally, Deadpool 3, Kevin Feige for years kept shooting down ideas that Sean Levy and, and Ryan Reynolds were bringing to the table. Kept shooting them. That's not the right story. That's not the right story. It's when they came up with the whole Hugh Jackman angle and everything. It's like, now, see, this is a movie we need to make. Mm -hmm. And then they made it. I'm not saying the same thing couldn't have happened with Joker 2, but watching the movie, it is clear this wasn't like people going, oh my God, we've got this awesome idea for a second Joker film. Studio, please let us make it. It was studio, 
hey, this one made a billion. Come up with something and make make it. And because it could have worked, it could have been great. But it's clear what it came out of, as opposed to say like a Toy Story is being continued because they just came up with great ideas. Yeah. So anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? Uh, this Joker movie, though it doesn't look a penny more expensive than the first one, costs nearly triple the cost to do it and is looking at maybe pulling in half of the box office. What kind of is the message that is communicated to you? What are you hearing out of all that? Whatever you guys think, jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.